So what the world needs is actually not more intelligence. It doesn't need more knowledge. I mean, we are just, we are drowning in facts and information. Mm. And we don't need more of that. To use an old fashioned word, what the world needs is wisdom. Wisdom is uh, inseparable from awareness. It, it arises out of awareness. Without wisdom, you, you are torn. You're, you may be identified with the, the polarities of life. That, uh, perhaps worth mentioning here, um, you know the ancient yin and yang, Chinese uh, way of looking at the world. There's the, the yin is the feminine principle and the yang is the masculine principle. So these, the polarities are everywhere in life. This is a very, for Western mind, it's a very strange way of looking at things. But the, the Chinese philosophy, ancient Chinese philosophy says there's, 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 there's an, uh, a play of, the, the world is um, a manifestation of the play between yin and yang, the, the feminine and masculine principles. You may remember the symbol of yin and yang. Mm -hmm. that, of um, and uh, here too, you can be you can be in the grip of a particular energy movement without awareness. You can get into the grip of yang, and then you would become uh, quite destructive if you go to an extreme. A country can be in the grip of yang energy, like. Uh, Germany was, Russia, China, any country where there's dictatorship uh, um, is in the grip of an extreme grip of Yang. Um, traditionally, society, in, at least in the West, has been uh, dominated by the Yang energy with occasional interludes of yin in between, but relatively insignificant. For example, the romantic movement in the 19th century in art and literature was some yin coming in, but not for too long. Mm -hmm. So- the, Would you put the enlightenment in, in, as a yin state of uh, being? In, enlightenment, there was a bit of yin coming in, yes, yes. But uh, the first half of the 20th century was an extreme manifestation of yang, the world wars, the genocide in, in Germany, in Russia, in China, Cambodia, and other places. Absurd unconsciousness, yang, of a yang. Then the, the world, the Western world especially experienced as a reaction to the extreme yang, uh, an influx of yin. It started in the 60s, actually a very strong influx of yin. And with that came uh, the, the women's, women's movement and all those things. Um, the more empathy towards other human beings came in. Also an openness to, to, towards spirituality. More, instead of the rigid patterns of institutionalized religion, there was an openness towards the influx also of Eastern spirituality coming into the West there was an empathy with, uh, with, this is where the empathy with, with the disadvantaged humans came from, an empathy to the suffering of people who are uh, physically uh, disabled, mentally disabled, or the so-called marginalized, or those things. Oh, this is a wonderful thing. Human could sense their suffering, so more empathy came up. And this was a great thing, and a necessary thing. Education changed completely from being uh, dominated by the yang energy, discipline and yang, and now education became more and more permissive. You do your own things. It became so permissive that eventually there was no structure anymore at all, and schools became chaotic, and family, many families became totally chaotic. And so, and the, the wonderful empathy towards other human beings turned into political correctness. We, quickly, the world was moving towards an extreme of yin <laughs> and to counterbalance, but there was no awareness. So people first were in the grip of the yang movement and mm -hmm. identified with that as a collective. And now a significant portion of Western civilization, not all, but a significant portion of the population is in the grip of a yin movement and it's not stopping. It's going to an extreme. 
where it, it, something that it was initially good and necessary yeah. now turns anything that goes to an extreme becomes destructive. And another ancient saying in, in Greek philosophy is uh, uh, nothing in excess. Nothing in excess. So now uh, the collective is, is in the grip, not all of it, but the giving part, the, especially the uh, the the mass the media, universities and so on, are strongly in the grip of yin. Uh, Germany is a, an interesting example. They like to go to extremes. They were an extreme of yang. Mm -hmm. They became the most aggressive country in Europe, and now they're going into extreme of yin. They are the most compassionate country in Europe, except Sweden. The most com they open their borders completely. So please, we want to help you. This is this is this consists of two things. There is the compassion that arises when Yin comes in. There is another element that needs to be mentioned. Yes, there is also guilt, which is, mm -hmm. uh, plays its part too. It's a combination of of guilt and Yin energy. So Yin is symbolized as this. This is Yin receptive, open. This is yang. You can see yang is a th masculine, the thrusting principle. It's almost a sexual yin, yang. So uh, yang says, let's close the borders, or an extreme form of yang says, let's expand our country and then close the borders. Mm -hmm. Let's attack the neighboring countries and then we'll be even bigger. Uh, the extreme of yin says, no borders at all. Anyway, we can walk, and this—it's—it it feels so good to be able to say, "How can we deny human beings who want a better life? How can we deny?" It feels so wonderful to say that, but what's lacking is wisdom. Mm. Compassion is there, and it's wonderful. So you have yin and yang. What's missing is it, there need to be, instead of two polarities, you need to be a triangle. At the apex of the triangle, you need to have awareness. If there's enough awareness, then you do, don't need to go to an extreme of either yin or yang. You know, it's so interesting because I wasn't really planning on doing anything sort of political with you, but actually I think in the last few minutes you've given me as good political analysis to sort of where we are. So without getting into the, yeah. the nitty gritty of politics, if, if your premise is basically right, and this is why I always say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. The yes. people that I'm frustrated with right now that you're describing as yin, I don't believe they're evil people. There can, no. be, there can be bad actors within that, let's say, or people yeah. that aren't acting yeah. in their conscious, but I don't believe that the bulk of them are. No. But if we're, act, if we're right now, we're caught between this. How, how does the good, decent person that I think most people are, that can check in and out of their higher self and all of those things, but that want a decent world, how do, we, how do we help these sides to get to that place? Well, first you have to be careful with yourself so that you don't get, do not get drawn to either one or the other extreme. Because now the reactive mode of going too far into yin is would be to go too far into yang. And so uh, a, a society that goes totally into yin would produce fascism again. Mm -hmm. That's the danger. So the individual needs to be aware that they don't go into reactivity so that, that you remain aware, so that you don't contribute uh, to the polarization in the world. So what, what, what you contribute, whether it's on the social media or in person, uh, when you speak to somebody or you write something, uh, be careful that you do not confuse also somebody's um, mental, emotional position, which may be either there or there, with who they are, and then regard them as an enemy. The ego feels strengthened. The more enemies it can have, the stronger it feels. There's always the tendency, the unconscious ego, to make others into enemies. So it's we need to develop enough awareness to be able to conduct a conversation with another human being without regarding the other who might hold very, very different mental positions as an enemy. 